Hello and welcome to my LCD monitor repair in 10 minutes. So this monitor would not switch on, the light would just come on and go off. So what we're going to do today is uh, take it apart and see if we can fix it. So the first step obviously is to take off the little panel at the back and unscrew the stand. Now all of them are different of course but in general you'll find that there's not many four, four bolts holding on the stand. And it could be a couple of screws maybe, there's two on the bottom of this one that you take out. And that's about it on this one. Just check around the sides and just make sure that there's there's nothing else there. So once we have it in this position, I just get a plain screwdriver and jam it down between the just the bezel or whatever you want to call it. It's the plastic, there's a back and a front to it and it clips together. Now, you want to be careful with this. If it's important that you don't mark it, just uh, people use plastic spudgers, they call them, but I, I find them just flimsy. And this, the way I do it with just a screwdriver, will leave small little marks on it, but most people really don't care about it. And the, given that they're worth so little these days, um, it's, it's really not a big deal. So I just generally don't waste any time trying to protect the surroundings. I just go at it with uh, a plain screwdriver until you get it off. Once you clip it off, you can flip it over. There it is. Just be careful because the speakers are sometimes connected to it. So just connect that from the main board. With the cover off, we can see that this is the main board and underneath this metal shield is the power. So let's take off that metal shield first of all. That's just to stop any electromagnetic interference. So once we take off this shield, our power supply will be underneath. And what we're looking for on this, it's not going to be the same on all of them, but what happens on a substantial number of LCD monitors and TVs is that the electrolytic capacitors on the power supply, they have a habit of failing. They're, there was a bad compound in them, and they just don't last with the heating and cooling. They just bulge and tend to vent at the top. So what you're looking for here is electrolytic capacitors which are those big cylindrical items there and you want to see see the two to the left of the board I'm gonna focus in now in just a second the two of them have tops that are vented yeah you can see them just there so what we need to do is replace them so the next step I'm gonna take out the power supply board there's normally just a couple of small screws attaching this. Just be careful with it. Uh, the cable back to the VGA board, just be careful with that because if you bend it or do something with it, you can damage it. So that's the board out. With the board on the table, the first thing we want to do is discharge the capacitor. I probably should have done this when it's on the board, but just to be safe, this is what I do. The, this power supply has been off for a good while, so I know that there's not, no charge in the electrolytic capacitor. But what you can do is hook up a light bulb, as I've done here, and just hook it across, simple light bulb, the two wires across the electrolytic capacitor, just to discharge any charge that might be in it. Once you've done that, you're free to work on the power supply without fear of getting shocked. So we're just looking at our two capacitors here. What I normally do is there's a lot of solder joints on the underside of the board so what I normally do is I normally mark the negative side of the capacitor uh, lead, uh, the negative lead of the capacitor sorry uh, just so number one I know where the capacitor physically is on the back of the board because you're looking at hundreds of joints and second of all so that you know which side is the negative side when you go to replace the electrolytic capacitor because the polarity is important on those it's not important on all capacitors but it is important on electrolytic capacitors so once I have them marked I then desolder them so normally the easiest way of doing this is just to feed in a bit of fresh solder and this helps you to melt the solder that's on already. Now my apologies for not zooming in a bit closer on this. I um, didn't have the capability of doing it at the time. But what I'm doing here is I'm just 
heating it with my solder iron and then using my solder sucker to take out the solder. It's a very good skill uh, using a solder sucker. It's something you want to really get you know, pretty adept at using. Because if you can get it cleanly out, you, you need just two goes to clean the solder from the two leads. And that's what I'm doing here. Then what I would generally do is just heat both sides and just gently work it out with my fingers. And there's the first one out. Now onto the second one. So once again, I'm not bothering to feed any solder onto this because the joints, the, you can normally tell by looking at the solder whether it's going to melt easy or not. This is a reasonably fresh board, so it's uh, the solder is easy enough to remove on it. So once again, heating both sides, uh, both leads. Now what I what you'll notice on this one when I flip it back over is even though I've cleared off the solder, it's still holding in position. What happens with these is that they glue them, they glue the capacitor to the board. So it's pretty simple in this one. Just cut the glue, uh, cut a hole between the uh, capacitor and the glue. We don't have to mind about damaging the capacitor in this because we know the damage, uh, capacitor is damaged already. So just, once again, solder, desolder the leads and pull it out from the other side and eventually it comes out. Take your time with it and it's easy enough to do. Now although these capacitors I know that they're already uh, damaged but you can verify if you have something like an ESR meter which just measures the capacitance of a capacitor but also the equivalent series resistance which can go high on electrolytic capacitors that have failed. So once you'll see here is 417 and 0 0.8 ohms uh, so you'd be expecting 680 microfarad and normally 0 0.1 or lower ESR normally so on the second capacitor this is meant to be 1000 microfarads and what we see in this one is that it's actually coming up as leaky and I'd say this was the main reason why our monitor would not turn on so we're going to replace both of them anyway if you see any of them with bulges at all you're better off you can pilfer these from old boards pretty easily and the two I'm using are second-hand ones, so rather than buying new ones, I just generally keep a stock of power supply boards and take the good ones off the old boards. You can use your ESR, ESR meter to verify that they're good if you have one. So what we're doing here, what I do is I sit it back in, make sure the polarity is right, make sure that you put the right capacitor with the right capacitance and voltage in the right place. I normally take pictures of them beforehand so I can verify it afterwards, which is what I can do with this video, obviously, as well. But once you have it soldered in place, I would normally leave something underneath it just to put a bit of pressure on the capacitor so that the leads are forced through the holes. Now, we have the two soldered back in place. Sorry, the two replacement capacitors soldered in place. So I'm just going to fix the board back in. So just replace the screws. Once again, just take your time with it. Um, it's a good idea to keep the uh, screws in a little uh, holder just so you don't lose them all and to keep track of which screws go in which, pos which positions because believe me it's very easy to quickly lose track of which screws go in, in which positions. It doesn't really matter on these but with laptops and other stuff like that you can uh, really do damage. So here's the cover putting back on so remember to put in this cable for the speakers and this just clips back on. Now this is kind of the beauty of the, the clip back on cover. Once you have it done, you just push it down. Just go all around the sides of it, make sure that it's fixed in. And that's great. Then once again, we just screw back in our stand. And any other screws that are holding the two sides of the monitor uh, case together. Now we screw in the last one and that's it. So our final test we have it back and working it's not the greatest piece of technology ever invented but it's certainly something that i will use in the workshop again thanks for watching